Hello. In the previous video, we studied how to diagonalize a matrix, and we know how to test if a matrix can be diagonalizable or not. Today, we study a very special class of matrices, symmetric matrices, and orthogonal diagonalization. Okay. First, let's talk about symmetric matrices. If you have some matrix A, and that matrix is equal to AT, the transpose of A, then A is called symmetric. Why? Look at this. Suppose you have A, I, J, right? And the transpose, that is A, J, I. Make sense? Uh, what does it mean? That means all entries which are symmetric with respect to the main diagonal are equal. So you have the following one. <coughs> Here's the main diagonal, right? So all entries symmetric with this. For example, here you have A11. You have A12 right here. Here's A21. They are equal. Make sense? And if you have A, one three so you have another one right here a three one and they are also equal right um, such matrices are called symmetrics okay um, <clears throat> for example you have one 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 and two right this is symmetry or uh, you have three by three one two three so here you should have one, two, three, right? Uh, like negative one, zero. So here you should have zero right here, and then like four. Make sense? All right, let's talk about properties of symmetric matrices. Suppose that you have a symmetric matrix A, then A is diagonalizable. All eigenvalues of A are real. And if lambda is an eigenvalue of A, with multiplicity equal to k, then lambda should have k linearly independent eigenvectors. Of course, from the property C, right, you may get property A because you know the C is the condition for matrix A to be diagonalizable, right? The property B is interesting. All eigenvalues of symmetric matrices are real. So you might have a feeling symmetric matrices are generalization of real numbers. How about that? If you have real number, right? So you might generalize to complex numbers, right? Make sense? And of course, among matrices of the order n by n, you have matrices that have complex eigenvalues but symmetric matrices only have real eigenvalues don't forget that let's consider the following example we have some matrix a two by two a b b c so this matrix is symmetric right and they ask us to prove that a is diagonalizable so that means we have to test if a has n linearly again vectors first we need to find eigenvalues in order to do that we have to solve the equation determinant of a minus lambda i equal to zero so what's that that is a minus lambda b b c minus lambda right and you take determinant you set it equal to zero this is nothing but a minus lambda c minus lambda and then minus b square right equal to zero so if you open this parenthesis you get lambda square minus a minus plus c lambda minus b square plus ac equal to zero so uh using quadratic formula we have lambda one two equal to a plus c plus minus square root of a plus c square minus 4 
negative b square plus ac right uh over over two look at this term we have to make sure that this term is always not negative right so that is you know a plus c square minus plus 4b square because minus negative and minus 4ac and we have a square plus 2ac plus c square plus 4b square minus 4ac 2ac with negative 4ac will be cancelled out so you have a square minus 2ac plus c square plus 4b square right and that is nothing but a minus c square plus 4b square which is always greater than or equal to zero that means this formula works right so we still need to consider if a has one or two different eigenvalues okay look at this if this is zero so i have a minus c equal to zero and b equal to zero from here i get a equal to c since b is equal to zero the matrix looks like a zero zero c this is already diagonal so of course in this case a is diagonalizable right in another case when this part is not zero then we have two different eigenvalues in here and the matrix is two by two with two different eigenvalues such matrix is diagonalizable make sense We didn't say anything about dimensions of eigenspaces, but from the very first properties of symmetric matrices, we know that if lambda is an eigenvalue of A with multiplicity equal to K, then lambda has K linearly independent eigenvectors. What does it mean? That means the dimension of the corresponding eigenspace is equal to k because lambda has k linearly independent eigenvectors and those vectors form a basics for the eigenspace right of lambda that means the dimension is k so if they give you a matrix and they ask you to determine the dimension of eigenspaces of all eigenvectors of some symmetric matrix then you just need to find multiplicity of each eigenvalue make sense so we need to solve the following equation determinant of a minus lambda i in this case i4 equal to zero which is equivalent to the following one one minus lambda negative two zero zero negative two one minus lambda zero 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 one minus lambda negative two zero zero negative two and one minus lambda okay and set this equal to zero so we have two zeros in i think each row and each columns well, so we just pick you know up to three row and column uh to find this determinant let's say let's pick this guy right so uh i have that is just one minus lambda times determinant of one minus lambda zero 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 in here 1 minus lambda negative 2 negative 2 1 minus lambda and minus with negative 2 so i have plus 2 okay determinant of negative 2 0 0 0 1 minus lambda negative 2 and 0 negative 2 1 minus lambda this is equal to 0 we have 1 minus lambda in here and 1 minus lambda because we have two zero right uh, determinant of 1 minus lambda minus 2 minus 2 and 1 minus lambda plus 2 times and here I have times negative 2 right and here determinant of 1 minus lambda negative 2 negative 2 1 minus lambda equal to 0 so if you pay attention this is common factor right uh, we can uh, factor it out. So I have the following one. 
1 minus lambda square minus 4, right? In here, I have 1 minus lambda square minus 4 equal to 0. So basically, that is, you know, 1 minus lambda square minus 4 and then square, right? <laughs> equal to 0. And here we can use the following a minus b square equal to a minus b times a plus b. I have this is 1 minus lambda minus 2 times 1 minus lambda plus 2 squaring here, squaring here equal to 0 because we have square right here. Then this is 1 negative 1 minus lambda square times 3 minus lambda square equal to 0. From here, we get lambda equal to negative 1 or lambda equal to 3. And of course, multiplicity of negative 1 and 3 are 2. That means their corresponding eigenspace have dimensions equal to 2. Make sense? Done. Interestingly, we didn't find any basics for eigenspaces and we still know the dimension of eigenspaces because we know multiplicity of eigenvalues. Now let's find eigenvectors of those eigenvalues right here. Okay, so for lambda equal to negative one, I need to solve the following homogeneous system. Zero. The first equation, 1 minus, let's say plus 1, because minus negative 1, right? Negative 2, 0, 0. The second one is negative 2, again 2 in here, 0, 0. Next one, 0, 0. 2, and negative 2. And we have 0, 0, negative 2, and 2. Okay, so we need to solve this system. Uh, from each equation, you can see actually the first and the second are the same. The third and the fourth are the same. So I will give only two equations. Uh, I have two. I might divide by two, right? So I still have one right here. Negative one, zero, zero, and zero. The next one is 0, 0, 1, negative 1, and 0. So we already have row echelon form, right? From here you can see this is free variable and this is also free variable, right? Uh, the solution looks like x1 equal to x2, x3 equal to x4, and you write in the form x2. 2 x2 x4 x4 or that is x2 1 1 0 0 plus x4 0 0 1 and 1 and these are two vectors in the basics for the eigenspace corresponding to lambda equal to negative 1 all right um let's find again vectors of three okay so when you have lambda equal to three you plug three into the equation you need to solve the following system one minus three negative two zero 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 in here negative two one minus three zero 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 one minus three negative two zero the last one is zero zero negative two and one minus three zero so each time you have in here negative two negative two negative two and negative two right and you can see that actually this system is equivalent to the following one we can ignore you know two equations so i have negative two i can write just one one zero zero you know i divide you know the first equation by negative two okay and i pick the third one 
and I also divide the third one by negative 2. So I get 0, 0 right here, 1, 1, and here 0, 0. So this is the row echelon form. This is x4. So we have x3 equal to negative x4. And we have x1 equal to negative x2, right? From here, I have general solution. x negative x2, x2, negative x4, and x4. Or I can rewrite as x2, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, plus x4, 0, 0, negative 1, and 1. These are two eigenvectors and they form basics for the eigenspace corresponding to lambda equal to 3. Alright? So you see, we have four vectors right here. 1, 2, 3, and 4. Of course, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 are linearly independent because we know symmetric matrices are diagonalizable, right? Uh, so, basic vectors of eigenspaces are linearly independent, but in this case, they have more interesting property. Let's consider the product of vectors in here and the product with vectors in here. Okay, so let's pick the first and the third. Okay, so I have the product of 1, 1, 0, 0 times negative 1, 1, 0, 0. What's that? That is 0. Right? If you, if you consider 1, 1, 0, 0 and 0, 0, negative 1, 1. This also 0. Similarly, you might have 0, 0, 1, 1 times negative 1, 1, 0, 0, and you can see that is also 0. And 0, 0, 1, 1 times 0, 0, negative 1, negative 1. This is also 0. So what does it mean? That means all vectors in the eigenspace for lambda equal to negative 1 are perpendicular to all vectors in the eigenspace for lambda equal to 3. Make sense? That means, you know, eigenspace corresponding to negative 1, right? Is perpendicular to eigenspace corresponding to 3. And they are different eigenvalues of the original symmetric matrix. This property is true for any symmetric matrix. That means, if you have a symmetric matrix and you have two different eigenvalues of that matrix, the corresponding eigenspaces to those different eigenvalues are perpendicular. Make sense? So we can summarize like this. If you have a matrix A, a is symmetric, okay? Lambda 1 and lambda 2 are different eigenvalues of A. Then, the eigenspace corresponding to lambda 1 is perpendicular to the eigenspace corresponding to lambda 2. Okay? This is very important. All right, now look at this. That means if you want to diagonalize the matrix A, you may find the following matrix P, right? We learned that in the previous uh, video. So I, I write all eigenvectors in here in the, the column form. Make sense? So I have the following one. 1, 1. 0, 0. That is the first. The second one is 0, 0. 
1, 1. Those vectors are corresponding to lambda equal to negative 1. Right? The next one is 0, 0, negative 1, and 1. Negative 1, 1, 0, 0. This is matrix P. Okay? And when we see that actually all columns of P are orthogonal. You see that? All columns of P are orthogonal to each other. Interesting, right? So basically, these columns will form some orthogonal basics, right? Because, you know, they are orthogonal with each other. So they will form an orthogonal basics for the whole space, right? Now look at this. When we study vector spaces in the product spaces, we learn how to use Gram-Schmidt process to orthogonalize a basics because we know that orthonormal basics are really good, right? So the matrix P diagonalize our matrix, or if you consider some linear transformation, right? So the linear transformation corresponding to this matrix can be diagonalized by an orthogonal basics. So based on that observation, a very natural question is, can we use some orthonormal basics to diagonalize a such matrix? Make sense? So the question is, by an orthonormal right basics that P diagonalize the given matrix. Okay, so uh <clears throat> For symmetric matrices, yes, we can do that. A matrix P is said to be orthogonal if first norm of columns right equal to one. Second columns are orthogonal with each other. Make sense? So like this matrix, yeah, this matrix is not orthogonal. All columns are perpendicular, that's good, but norms of columns are not one, right? But we can normalize that. It's not a big deal. Make sense? Let's see some examples of orthogonal matrices. The first one you can consider P, 0, negative 1, 1, and 0. You know, two columns are orthogonal because that product is 0 and they have norm equal to 1, right? Uh, like another one, P equal to 3 fifths, 0, negative 4 fifths, 0, 1, 0. 4 over 5, 0, 3 over 5. You see that? This is also normal, uh, orthogonal. Right? Um, and if you want to make an orthogonal matrix from here, you also can make that. Let's do this. So you just divide each column by the norm of, of that column, right? So I have 1 over square root of 2, 1 over square root of 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 over square root of 2, 
1 over square root of 2, 0, 0, negative 1 square root of 2, 1 square root of 2, negative 1 square root of 2, 1 square root of 2, 0, 0. And this matrix is orthogonal. Of course, this matrix also diagonalize our matrix, matrix A right here. Make sense? Such diagonalization is called orthogonal diagonalization. Okay? Um, <clears throat> another equivalent, you know, condition to uh, orthogonality of a matrix is if P to negative 1 is equal to P transpose. Right? Uh, so you might check this condition or you might check these two conditions to see if a matrix is orthogonal or not. All right? Now, let's find a matrix P that orthogonally diagonalize the following matrix A. Negative 2, 2, 2, and 1. This matrix is symmetric, so we know that A is diagonalizable. And we know that for different eigenvalues, eigenvectors are orthogonal, right? So basically, we need to find eigenvectors, eigenvalues, and then we normalize them to get an orthogonal matrix. Make sense? Let's do this. So we need to find eigenvalues, right? And then find eigenvectors and we have to normalize eigenvectors right and then you write them in the column form right and you set the matrix P okay so let's find eigenvalues I need to solve the following equation a minus lambda i equal to zero, right? Determinant. This is nothing but negative two minus lambda, two, two, one minus lambda, equal to zero. And then it is two plus lambda times lambda minus one, because you have negative, negative with the negative here. So I write plus, right? But I change one minus lambda with lambda minus 1, negative 2 minus lambda with 2 plus lambda, minus 4 equal to 0. From here, I have lambda square. 2 lambda minus lambda is just lambda. And then negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6 equal to 0. We can use quadratic formula. I have lambda 1, 2 equal to negative 1 plus minus. 1 plus 4 times 6 minus, with negative is plus, okay, over 2. So I have negative 1 plus minus square root of 25 over 2, or negative 1 minus 5 over 2, negative 1 plus 5 over 2, here is negative 3, here is 2. So this matrix has two eigenvalues, negative 3 and 2. Let's find eigenvectors, okay? This is the first step. The second step, eigenvectors. So I plug negative three into, into this form and solve the homogeneous system, right? Uh, basically, I can, I can plug negative three right here, okay? So negative two minus negative three is negative two plus three, two, here I have zero, zero, two, one minus negative three, I have 4, right? Uh, so I simplify that. You have 2, 4 in here, and then you have 1, 2 in here. So basically, you can pick the first one, right? Um, x1 plus 2x2 two two equal to 0. From here, you have x1 equal to negative 2x2. Two two. And you can write a solution as negative 2x2, two x2, two, two, right? Or x2, negative 2, 1. So this is one vector. 
this vector form a basics for the eigenspace corresponding to lambda equal to negative 3. Okay, let's move to the next eigenvalues, lambda equal to 2. So for lambda equal to 2, I plug negative 2 minus 2 in here, 2, 0, 2, and 1 minus 2, 0. Okay, so this is nothing but, you know, I can pick 2, x1 minus x2 equal to 0, right? Because they are, you know, just scalar multiple of each other. Then from here I get x2 is equal to 2 x1. So I can write like this. x1, 2 x1, right? And that is x1, 1, 2. We have the second vector right here. Okay. We can see that actually these two vectors are orthogonal because the dot product is zero. Okay, now we need to find P. You know, usually if we just need to diagonalize, so we can write, yeah, actually that is negative two, one, and then one, two, right? And the matrix A is equal to P times the eigenvalues. We have to keep the order right here. If you write this vector in the first column, so you have to, to keep negative three right here, right? And here we have 2, 0, 0, and P2, negative 1. But now, we want to orthogonally diagonalize our matrix. So I need to normalize these columns. Make sense? So I normalize this. I have the following matrix P prime. I can write like this. Negative 2 over the norm of the first column is square root of 5, right? And then 1 over square root of 5. Next one, I have 1 over square root of 5. And here I have 2 over square root of 5. So this matrix is orthogonal. And of course, this matrix will diagonalize our matrix A. Right? Orthogonally diagonalize. So I have P T A P is equal to negative two over square root of five, one square root of five, one square root of five, two over square root of five, times A is negative two, 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 one, multiply with the the matrix. So P T is the same. Right? So negative 2 over square root of 5, 1 over square root of 5, 1 over square root of 5, 2 over square root of 5. And of course, you know, you get exactly the matrix right here. You know, this example is good in the sense that our matrix is 2 by 2, right? And the matrix has two different eigenvalues. But now, suppose that you consider some matrix 3 by 3, right? And that matrix has only two eigenvalues. That means one of eigenvalues should have multiplicity equal to 2. We know, you know, eigenvectors corresponding to different eigenvalues are orthogonal. But eigenvectors corresponding to one eigenvalue may not be orthogonal. Make sense? So in that situation, if you want to orthogonally diagonalize your matrix, you have to use Gram-Schmidt process. Suppose you have the following matrix A equal to 2, 2, negative 2, 2, negative 1, and 4, negative 2, 4, and negative 1. We need to that we need to orthogonally diagonalize this matrix. Okay, that means we have to find orthogonal matrix P 
that diagonalize this matrix makes sense i need to find eigen values i need to solve a minus lambda i equal to zero so that is not input two minus lambda two negative two two negative one four minus oh no uh, here negative one minus lambda four negative two four negative one minus lambda equal to zero now i want to make more zeros in this matrix before i calculate the determinant so i see that we have two right here negative two i just need to add the second to the third okay i have the following one two minus lambda two negative two two negative one minus lambda and four i have zero right here and i have three minus lambda here i also have three minus lambda equal to zero right and we have common factor three minus lambda i can take that out because of properties of determinants so i have two minus lambda two negative two two negative one minus lambda four zero and one one right here equal to zero okay and now i will make one more zeros in the third row i multiply the second row with negative one add to the third uh, I have the following one 3 minus lambda 2 minus lambda 2 negative 2 2 negative 1 minus lambda and negative 1 add to the third I have lambda plus 5 right 0 1 and 0 oh here I should have uh, negative 4 sorry okay now we have 2 0 we can simplify this this is 3 minus lambda so i erase this row and erase this column okay i have determinant of 2 minus lambda negative 4 2 and lambda plus 5 equal to 0. make sense all right so this is from here i get lambda equal to 3 and i have to find this determinant that is 2 minus lambda times lambda plus 5 plus 8 right minus negative 8 so plus 8 this is negative lambda square minus 3 lambda and plus 18 equal to 0 uh, you can solve this quadratic equations you can see that actually this equation has two roots lambda 1 2 equal to 3 plus minus square root of 3 square plus 4 times 18 right because minus negative so i have plus over negative 2 so this is equal to 3 plus minus we have uh, 4 times this is equal to 72 plus 9 right so i have 81 the square root of 81 is just 9 plus minus 9 here over negative 2 so i have 3 plus 9 over negative 2 or 3 minus 9 over negative 2 here i have negative 6 and here i have 3. okay so let's compare this with this basically this matrix has two eigenvalues lambda 1 equal to 3 and lambda 2 equal to 6. the multiplicity of this guy is 2 right And this is just one. So we know that eigenvectors of lambda one will be orthogonal to all eigenvectors of lambda like two, right? But there's no guarantee that all eigenvectors of lambda one are orthogonal with each other. So we need to orthogonalize that. For lambda equal to three, I need to solve the following homogeneous system two minus 3 2 negative 2 2 negative 1 minus 3 4 negative 2 4 negative 1 minus 3 0 0 0 right here okay uh, and here i have negative 1 2 negative 2 0 2 negative 4 4 0 and negative 2 4 negative four zero look at this so you know 
they are scalar multiple with each other so i just pick the the first one make sense i have negative x1 plus 2x2 minus 2x3 equal to 0 from here i have x1 equal to 2x2 minus 2x3 right so the general solution looks like 2x2 minus 2x3 right x2 x3 and if we break this out we have x2 2 1 0 plus x3 negative 2 0 and 1 okay so uh these two vectors are not orthogonal you see that the pro the dot product is negative 4 they are not orthogonal but they will be orthogonal with the eigen vectors for for the for the lambda equal to negative 6 right here uh, yes negative 6 sorry okay for lambda equal to negative 6 we need to solve the following system 2 plus 6 2 negative 2 2 minus 1 plus 6 4 and negative 2 4 negative 1 plus 6 here is 0 0 0 okay so let's simplify this in the first row we have 4 1 negative 1 right 0 0 0 uh, in the second row uh, I can add the second row to a third to make this guy 0 because we have 2 negative 2 uh, I have 2 in here I have 5 in here I have 4 in here and 0 9 and 9 here okay and now if I multiply the second row with negative 2 right and add to the first I have the following one 0 negative 9 negative 9 0 2 5 4 0 and here 0 1 1 right you know we may divide divide the third row by 9 right but from here you can see the first equation and the third equation are the same so I ignore one I get the following one 2 5 4 0 0 1 1 0 and then I multiply the second row by negative 5 and add to the first I get 2 0 negative 1 0 0 1 and 1 we already have row reduced row echelon form from here I see that this is free right and uh, x 2 equal to negative x3 x1 equal to x3 over 2 so i can write the general solution as x3 over 2 negative x3 and x3 right or if i take x3 over 2 out i get the following one one in here negative 2 and 2 okay so we have again vectors of lambda equal to negative 6. all right we already have three okay one is right here other ones is right here now we have a basics negative 2 2 let's say v1 v2 and v3 right so v2 is 2 1 0 and v3 v3 is negative 2 0 and 1 You know we use gram schmidt process but we don't have to use for three vectors as usual because we know exactly these two guys right they are already orthogonal so we need to orthogonalize these two vectors does it make sense and then we normalize them to get orthonormal basics so uh, i need to apply gram schmidt process for v2 and v3 only uh, I have v2 is 2 1 0 and we let's say that is u2 right denote by u2 we have u3 equal to v3 minus orthogonal projection of v3 on v2 okay uh, let's find this right here that is dot product divided by the norms to square and then times v2 
The dot product between V2 and V3 is what? That is negative 4, right? The norm of V2 is negative 5. It's square root of 5, but we take square. So basically, uh, you know, we have negative 4 over 5, right? And then times V2 is 2, 1, 0. Okay, this is a total number projection. So I have, this is negative 2, 0, and 1, minus negative 4 over 5, 2, 1, and 0. Finally, I get negative 2 plus 8 over 5, right? 0 minus plus 4 over 5, and 1, which is negative 2 over 5, 4 over 5, and, and 1. Okay, so you know, <clears throat> we already have orthogonal basics, which is V1, V2, and U3. And the last step is we need to normalize them to get orthonormal basics. Let me copy them right here. Orthogonal basics. Negative 1, 1, negative 2, 2. The next one is 2, 1, 0. And the last one is negative 2 over 5, 4 over 5, and 1. So we need to find the norm of this guy, which is equal to 4, 4, and 1 is 9. So I have 3. And here I have square root of 5, right? The norm of the last guy is equal to square root of 4 over 25 plus 16 over 25 plus 1. So we simplify that, we get square root of 20 over 25 plus 1, 4 over 5 plus 1, okay? And this is 3 over square root of 5, okay? So we divide this by 3. I have 1 over 3, negative 2 over 3, 2 over 3. We divide this by negative by square root of 5. I have 2 over square root of 5, 1 over square root of 5, and 0. And I divide this by the norm, which is 3 over square root of 5. So I had the following one. Negative 2 over 5 times square root of 5 over 3, right? Uh, 4 over 5 times square root of 5 over 3. And 1 as square root of 5 over 3 right here. So if we simplify this, we can write as negative 2 over 3 square root of 5. In here, I have 4 over 3 square root of 5 and square root of 5 over 3. Okay, we already have orthonormal basics. And now we set the matrix P, that is 1 third, negative 2 thirds, 2 thirds, 2 over square root of 5, 1 over square root of 5, 0, and negative 2 over 3 square root of 5, 4 over 3 square root of 5, and square root of 5 over 3. Okay, and don't forget, if we write in this order, right, in this order, we need to, to keep in mind that the first two vectors We need to keep in mind that the first vector is 1, negative 2, and 2, right? Which is corresponding to lambda equal to negative 6. So I have negative 6 in here, right? Next one, I have 3, and I have 3 right here, which is the diagonal matrix. Make sense? And here we have P, 2, negative 1, times P, and this is equal to to our matrix. All right, so that's how we can find an orthogonal matrix that orthogonally diagonalize the given symmetric matrix.
So I finished my video in here. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Thank you.